Welcome to Live Greater, a health and wellness podcast brought to you by the University of Maryland Medical System. We put knowledge and care within reach, so you have everything you need to live your life to the fullest. This podcast is sponsored by UM Upper Chesapeake Health. I'm Amanda Wild. Language has a surprisingly significant impact on health. Today, we explore verbal medicine with Colleen Curran, acupuncturist at Upper Chesapeake Health's Kaufman Cancer Center. Dr. Curran, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. How would you describe the effect words have on our health? As far as language, and maybe I can take it back just a little bit to explain verbal medicine in general. When the pandemic happened, you know, as an acupuncturist, I had to use telemedicine to treat my patients, essentially. So we really explored how language or what we would call word needles impacted the patient's experience of going through a treatment, whether it was through taking them through a meditation, envisioning certain words, and then using self-acupressure to fully support envisioning that word to elicit a response in the body and the brain to essentially transform their body's response in the moment. So utilizing words to describe sensations that they're feeling in their body, it creates an awareness so that through that awareness, they're able to recognize what's happening and then choose to transform that experience. Wow. So this started with you having to find a way to be effective as an acupuncturist over telehealth. Yes. So how effective did you find this to be? Very effective. Utilizing guided meditation and diaphragmatic breathing, patients were really able to embrace the self-acupressure as we went through the telemedicine appointment and feel empowered because they were able to recognize what was happening in their body, giving anxiety a name. What are you feeling in your body? What is anxiety to you? I mean, we know what the diagnosis is of anxiety, but that could feel different for different people. So do you feel warm in your body? Do you feel like a a quivering in the chest? Do you feel a tension in the body? And so recognizing, giving it a name, we're calling it anxiety. We are identifying it. And then we're either choosing to live within that emotion or that sensation in the body, or through breathing, we're choosing to transform it. So if you're feeling anxiety in the moment, I know I'm feeling anxiety. I'm feeling warm in the body. I'm recognizing that it is anxiety for me. How can I transform that? What would I like to transform that into? So it could be peace. So then we take the patient back to the last time that you felt peaceful. So envisioning that place or that space in your mind, it could be in a garden. And what do patients experience that let you know that this verbal medicine is working? They're able to achieve the transformation and they're able to feel it in their bodies. So if they're feeling anxiety and they're noticing heat in the body, then after envisioning peace and doing the diaphragmatic breathing and some self-acupressure, they're able to share, and it doesn't take long, (laughs) it only takes a few minutes, they're able to share that the heat has lessened, maybe the tension has lessened in the body, so they feel empowered to know that, in essence, whenever they experience an emotion or a sensation that may have a negative connotation, they have the ability to transform that on their own. And yeah, these are tools you can take with you wherever you go. Yes. This is so fascinating. Is there research on this subject, the impact of words on health? And if so, what does research show in terms of using language? There is research. There's actually a lot of research in regards to telemedicine and telehealth and how that actually, that people respond to it. Also, I think one of my favorite researchers and authors is Mr. Emoto. I'm not sure if you're familiar with his work, but he used high-speed photography that visually captured the structure of water, not only at moments of freezing, but also moments of thought or playing certain musical compositions. And he showed how the water droplets changed 
based on like what you said to the water droplet or the kind of music or resonance that was played. And it showed symmetry when there were words or thoughts projected that had a positive connotation. He showed pictures. It was fascinating. So if we think of the human body, the human body is made up of roughly 60% water. So if we can kind of take that association, if his research showed that even you know, speaking words or thinking words that have a positive connotation, that's affecting the water in our bodies. Are there some best words to use to create that positivity or to care for oneself? I think it depends on the individual. I really like patients to choose words that resonate with them, but usually it's peace, calm, ease, and even speaking those words, feeling into speaking those words, it creates that resonance in your body. Now, a lot of us, of course, you know, are hard on ourselves and we always hear about positive self-talk. What is the best way to learn that or to change habits if we tend to be hard on ourselves? I would say be easy with yourself in the moment. Let whatever is occurring in, in the present moment kind of like bubble up to the surface and be aware of it. Because if we're not aware of it, then we don't have the opportunity to actively transform the present moment. It's a choice. You can choose the negative tape reel or, you know, you can just take the opportunity to stop and notice that you're playing the negative tape reel in your mind and choosing how to change that. That's the hard part, stopping, noticing, and then implementing a change. Exactly. It takes practice. Yeah, I was just going to say, how do you help patients with that? So just teaching them awareness in regards to body noticing. What are you noticing in your body? So when someone shares with me, we'll use anxiety again, a patient will say, oh, well, I have anxiety. Okay, so I don't know what anxiety feels like for you, but let's explore that. So bringing the patient into what they notice on a body level and cultivating that awareness with the patient, they're further able to recognize, okay, I'm feeling anxiety right now. And I'm going to stop whatever I'm doing in the moment or just pause. I mean, you could be standing in line getting a coffee and have anxiety. So it's just recognizing it, stopping and taking three deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. That stops the body. It actually stops the fight or flight response. So it's like reprogramming the brain. It's saying, we're not going to go there. <laughs> we're not going to go into full anxiety. We're going to choose to pause, take a couple deep breaths, and that reprograms the brain and the body responds differently. What are the long-term effects of doing this practice, if you've seen that? Patients are empowered. They don't need to come in for acupuncture as often. They're able to really transform their lives on their own. They have less stress, less body pain. They have better relationships with themselves, but also family members, loved ones, because they're cultivating peace within themselves. Acceptance, awareness, and they're able to be examples for others and share this because everyone can do this. You don't necessarily have to come in for an acupuncture treatment, and it's a big part of acupuncture as well. We do the breathing when needles are inserted, but this is just a tool that everyone can use at any time. So it has a ripple effect. Meaning when someone else is healthier, they sort of exude that. If it is calmness and peace they're feeling, they sort of exude that to those around them as well. Yes. And if they see that someone else is maybe struggling, then they can offer the teaching. So it seems so simple and like something anyone can do. Yes, absolutely. At any time. Sometimes I recommend for some people that are really busy setting a timer or taking time at a certain time of the day and just dedicating that to just stopping whatever you're doing. I mean, we all go on lunch break, but it's like hurried lunch, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, oh, we have yeah. to eat and then we have to get back to what we're doing. So I recommend choosing a certain time or if you have lunch time and just taking a break, setting a timer and just stopping whatever you're doing and just having a seat and just doing some deep breathing. I mean, it's easy as four deep breaths, just in through the nose, holding for four, and then out through the mouth. That resets the entire body. 
And it's so really doable because it doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah, it doesn't. It's that simple and that quick. I mean, 30 seconds. I've seen people be able to shift in seconds. It just, what matters is the pause. What matters is the awareness. What matters is being in our bodies. I just love what you said. I just wanted there to be a pause there. Dr. Curran, thank you for your insights into the impact of words on health and the language of healing and how we can use that to affect not only ourselves, but make things more positive for those around us. Absolutely. Thank you. This episode of Live Greater is sponsored by UM Upper Chesapeake Health. Through an unparalleled combination of high-quality care and leading-edge technology, UM Upper Chesapeake is improving the health of Northeastern Maryland residents by providing an exceptional patient experience for every person, every encounter, every day. Find more shows just like this one at umms.org slash podcast. Thank you for listening to Live Greater, a health and wellness podcast brought to you by the University of Maryland Medical System. We look forward to you joining us again. I'm Amanda Wild. Be well.